Hi, I'm Phil Van Allen, and this is a tutorial on how to use the NetLab Toolkit with iOS devices like this iPad here, or the iPhone, or the iPod Touch. Now you can see that we have an Arduino here, which is hooked to my computer, and as I turn the knob that's connected to the Arduino, a graphic is moving on the iPad. Now the iPad is wirelessly talking to the hub, which is running on the computer. Not only can we access anything on the Arduino, but we can use the sensors in the device. So here, I'm using the accelerometer in the iPad and moving this ball back and forth. Now, for those of you who've used the NLAP Toolkit before, you know that we use widgets to accomplish all of this, and they're very easy to use. And I can just reveal them. I have it hidden right there. And there are now are all the widgets. So you can see again, as I move the um, accelerometer, um, you can see that the uh, right-hand analog end is tracking the output of the accelerometer. Similarly, the left-hand analog end widget is tracking the analog end of the Arduino that's, again, connected to my computer. Okay, well, let's get right into it and see how to make one of these. All right, so here's Flash, uh, as usual, and you can see that this is the project that we just uh, looked at on the iPad. But let's start one from scratch so you can really see how this works. So we'll uh, create a new document. ActionScript 3 as usual. So there's a standard Flash document, but then to turn it into um, something that will work on, um, <clears throat> on the iOS devices, we go over here to where it says Player, and we select Air for iOS. Okay, now once we've done that, let's go ahead and save this document. We'll call this uh, iOS Demo 2. Okay, great. And now let's go to the Air for iOS settings under the File menu. Okay, here we are. So uh, there are some default settings which we want to we, which we want to change. Uh, first of all, aspect ratio. This determines whether it's portrait or landscape or both. We're going to set it to landscape. The rendering we suggest using the GPU, which makes it run faster. And lastly, the device, and let's set this to iPad instead of iPhone. That means it'll scale correctly for the iPad. Okay, now under deployment, um, we need to set up your Apple developer certificate and provisioning profile. Now, um, of course, this does require that you already be an Apple developer, and um, once you've become a developer, um, you'll be able to create these certificates and provisioning profiles. That's a somewhat complex process that uh, we don't, won't go into here in this tutorial, but there are many resources out there for you to uh, learn how to do that. So we just uh, uh, set up a uh, link to wherever you've stored your certificate and provisioning file profile. And then also you have to remember to put in your the password that you use to set up the certificate. Um, for now, we'll just use Quip Publishing for device testing. Okay, so um, let's get this project going. So we'll put an analog input widget on the stage, and we'll leave that as Arduino 0. Remember that's set over here, input 0. That, that's where our knob is uh, plugged into. And then we'll put out a clip control widget on the stage. And lastly, we'll go to the library and um, I'm going to steal from over here a, uh, this image and paste it in here. So now we've got an image on the stage. We want to name it Clip1 because that's what Clip Control talks to. And then we need to remember to set the uh, instance name of the analog in widget, which is the default input 0. So we now have an analog in connected to the clip control, which then talks to this graphic here, which is named clip1. Okay, so there's one more widget we need to put on because when we're using the mobile devices, like the iPad, um, we need to know the IP address of the computer where the hub is running. And so that's what mobile control is for. And that's a new <coughs> uh, widget as of this release. So here it is, mobile control, we'll put that up here. And it must be named mobile control. The M is lowercase and the C in control is uppercase. Once we have that uh, widget on the stage, all of the widgets will pay attention to this one mobile control widget. 
And the reason for this is that often when you're on a, a DHCP network where your IP address of your computer, where the hub is running, it may change. And to make it really simple and to not have to configure each widget differently to uh, talk to the hub that's running on the computer, we just have a central location, which is mobile control. Um, you'll see how this works in a minute. Now, if I knew the IP address that was um, on my uh, computer and it was static, I could set that here in the default IP parameter of the mobile control widget. I'm going to leave it at its default and show you how to change it at runtime, which is great. That You can change that IP address at runtime to adjust to whatever your network is set up as. Okay, so um, that's all great. Now we can go ahead and test this on the computer. So I can go to control, oops, control test. And it takes a little longer to um, create the Swift uh, because it's an error for iOS file, but there it is. And so you can see if I go ahead and type in dot nine here on the computer. And then I click on this button here and that then activates all of the widgets. Now I can go ahead and connect and um, it's connecting to my, my Arduino and I can pull that in here for you. So you can see as I move the knob it changes so and, and notice here that um, it's running on both the iPad and on the computer so multiple devices can talk to um, the Arduino. Don't worry about that little delay you see in the video, that's just the capturing software I'm using. Okay, now let's put it over on the device. So to deploy to the actual device, um, we have to publish it in Flash. So let's go here to File, Air, again, Air for iOS settings. And um, notice there's a Publish button here. So we go ahead and publish. And um, that takes about a minute and a half to do. So while that's all happening, um, let's uh, hide Flash. And I want to talk about um, how this works. So you have to have Xcode here um, to uh, install uh, things onto your iPad. And uh, um, here is uh, where your iOS files are. And they're always called I .ipa. So these are the files that you would drag onto your, your iPad. Now I'm going to um, bring up my, uh, my uh, video here so you can see. I'm going to go ahead and plug in um, the iPad to my computer because um, it has to be plugged in while we're um, transferring the, the file from Flash. So let's check in on Flash and it's uh, still going. Okay, we're back, and um, um, so here's the IPA file, and you can see over here is the iPad, and what we want to do is, in, in Xcode, we want to be clicked on Applications. And um, so with that, we can then simply drag this file over, drop it. You can see that the yellow light goes yellow for a second, and then green when it's completed um, copying over. Okay, so uh, let me bring back up the, oh, the video is still there. Now I'm going to exit the um, currently running app. And one thing to know here is that um, the apps tend to continue running in the background even when you've exited them. Uh, Adobe should probably fix that, but for right now it's still running. And so I just want to make sure that that original app is not running anymore. So I can uh, double click on the, the home button on the iPad, um, click and hold and then um, delete that. So that takes it out of uh, multitasking and it's not running. Um, so now um, our new application seems to have been dropped over here. So I can click that and uh, it takes a second to go. It's waiting for me to enter the IP address and mobile control. So I'll uh, put in .9 and then tap to start. Now everything connects and uh, it takes a second um, for the Arduino to connect, which it now has. Okay, so you can see that the knob um, controls the graphic on the screen and if I want to make the widgets disappear, I simply tap here and now all we have is uh, the app that we've designed. 
Okay, perfect. So let's show you some more capabilities here. Um, let's go back to Flash. And um, so suppose we want to access the accelerometer as you saw in the original demo at the top of the tutorial. What we can do is um, add in another analog in. And over in the controller area, we simply select accelerometer. I also want to point out that um, we can access the microphone in the uh, iPad or iPhone or iPod Touch. But we're going to use the accelerometer. So we just do that. And then we need another clip control. Here we go. Now I'm going to name this second one input 1. And I'm going to bring in another graphic. We'll bring that guy from here. Copy that. And paste it in. It has an instant, instance name of ball, and which means that we need to set this input, this clip control, set its properties to listen to input one, that second one that's set to accelerometer, and then we need to set the clip that it's going to control to ball. Okay, there you have it. <coughs> So that's all we need to do. I'm going to save this and publish. We'll say OK. And uh, let's hide Flash and back to uh, Xcode and the Finder. And we again simply drag our IPA file over to the device. Once this goes green, which it just did, we can now switch to um, the iPad, and um, here's our uh, our app. We'll start it up, and um, there are both. Now again, we go to the mobile control, set the correct IP address, tell everything to connect, and we'll tell the accelerometer to connect as well, and we can see that um, not only the accelerometer works, but the um, knob works as well. Um, now given that the, that the size of the stage here is 550 wide, um, we can change our max here to 550. And um, that means now that we get our, our full width for the full range of the knob from 0 to 550. And uh, similarly, um, with the accelerometer, we get the full range. Now you notice that the accelerometer is a little jerky, and if we want to smooth it out, of course, we can always um, click on easing, and that gives it a much uh, smoother kind of feel. And um, also, we may want to invert here, so that way it seems to go down when we tilt it down, and the other way when we tilt it the other way. OK, so you can see. Um, that uh, this is really quite easy to do, um, that uh, we simply build our application in Flash just like we normally do, but we need to set the player type to error for iOS, and then uh, just put in our settings um, in this panel, including the certificate and provisioning profile. And after that, it's a breeze to transfer NetLab Toolkit projects from your computer to your iOS device and connect them to the Arduino or anything else, including the Connect uh, via OSC, um, which you can see in another tutorial. All right, thanks a lot.